So here we are in Teams, and I've received a post from my boss asking me to get a document internally approved and to get it sent out for signature as soon as possible so someone can commence work on Monday morning. Starting with a new conversation, I can enact the Acrobat plugin directly from the new conversations panel. Once it boots up, this allows me to attach a file from a number of sources, from Teams and channels, from OneDrive, but in this case, I'm gonna upload it from my computer. There's the file I'd like to collaborate, and now I'm gonna save a copy to my Teams file section. Once that's done, the chat with new conversation will appear. I put in a note from my team, and I post that to the team to enact the collaboration. Now this is the experience for me and my team. All you need to do is hit the open button to open the PDF where I can view it using the Acrobat plugin. Once it comes in, I can take advantage of thumbnails and if it's a long format content, I could have collapsible and expandable bookmarks. So let's move now to make some commenting. So I'm gonna close my thumbnail tab, move over here and let's highlight some text because I need the legal team to check something out. So I simply click and drag over the text and then I'm able to go through and enter my comments for the legal team. Next, I need to tell the team something in the document. So I'm gonna put a sticky note on here saying, need this by end of day, otherwise our employee won't be onboarded by Monday morning. Now once I've made all my changes based on the comments that I've collected on my PDF, it's time to get this approved internally. So now I'm gonna do a new conversation and now we're gonna move into Microsoft approval. Here I need to get Megan to approve this internally. So I'm gonna select Megan, navigate down to attach my file from Teams and Channels, and I'm gonna navigate to the SharePoint repository. So inside my sites, in my team, find it here in my legal and compliance documents, there's my NDA that I need Megan to approve. And then lastly, let's give it a bit of a name for the approval. And then once she's approved that, we can then move into Adobe Sign. So I send that out. Now once she's approved it, guess what? I can now go from a basic approval to an e-sign and Adobe Sign comes straight into the interface where I can log in securely into the Adobe Sign service and send the file out. But let's not do the demo from here. Navigating over to the right, I'm gonna put the Adobe Sign add-in. Here we can see the add-on for Sign, Acrobat, and Creative Cloud. I'm also gonna pin this to my sidebar. And this enables me to do two things. First of all, I can use the Adobe Sign chatbot. Here I can query what's going on in my world, and I can also bring the Adobe Sign service to where I need it. Here I'm gonna sign on with single sign-on and all the standards and security my company would expect as an enterprise product, and the Adobe Sign service comes to where I need it. But people don't work inside the Adobe Sign chatbot. They like to work in their teams, so let's take our demo to a third location. Moving over to Teams, I'm gonna to go to the Contoso site and the general channel. Here you can see I've pinned Adobe Sign. So, search sign, pin Adobe Sign to the channel, and then you bring the sign service to where you need it. So, let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do here is I'm going to sign first on the NDA, and then my contractor, who I need to start Monday, is gonna sign second. In fact, they're a signer. If it wasn't, I could change their roles. I could use second level authentication, but I'm not in this instance. Let's choose a message template, non-disclosure, and let's personalize the message for Matt Signer. Now it comes time to add my file, so I can add it from my computer. In this case here, I'm gonna use a pre-existing, because I've uploaded it as a template, and I'm gonna attach that mutually binding NDA. Let's go in here, set a completion deadline, so it's gonna be completed by Friday, otherwise you're not coming in Monday, and then we can also set a reminder every business day. Now, even though the contract's in English, I can set one of 34 languages for the UI if English isn't Matt's first language. And that's it, as simple as that. I sign first, he signs second, hit the send button. Being the first signer, the experience is it comes straight back to me in Teams. Now I could opt to sign this later, but in this case here, I'm gonna read through the message. Once I'm ready, I can quickly click on the Start button, which takes me where I need to start filling out forms and signing. So here I'm gonna sign. Notice it's remembered my credentials, but I could always use a system font to sign, a mouse, stylus, or pen, upload an image, or send a command to my mobile phone. 
I'm gonna use a mouse styles and pen and use my drawn signature. Here it's removed my title from my profile and I'm gonna enter my phone number and notice here we're mitigating risk, eight digits, nine digits, not 10. So for a landline or a mobile. Next I'm gonna to click to sign. Now this is the first of our three eyes of Australian law. The intent to sign digitally, the identities have all been verified and the document is intact verbatim at time of signing. Now, once that's done, I can now move over to the Manage tab and I can manage my little world or my group, department's little world or the whole organization's world. Here is a document we just sent out to Matt Siner. So in here, I've got a lot of controls. I could cancel agreements. I could literally swap out the signer if I sent it to the wrong person. Or I could go in here and show more and maybe move down to something like add a note. So let my team know that I'm away on a Friday, but we need this signed by end of day. Otherwise, Matt isn't working for us on Monday. I can also see what's been completed, what's canceled, expired, or what's in draft. And if I'm an administrator of the platform, I could change templates, web forms, and bulk sends. And now it's time for my recipient to sign. They're going to receive an email, in this case on their mobile device. They're going to open the email up, and the first thing we can see here is it's fully branded, have company logos, information, etc. Now all they require is a modern browser on something. So as we tap here to sign, choose a modern browser on an iPad, let's choose Safari. Now it's only admins, senders, and managers of workflows need Adobe Sign. And as you can see here, recipients just need that modern browser. Here I could decline to sign or delegate if I was permitted, but in this case here, that's moved to signing. Let's fill out the name, Matt Siner. Put in, he's gonna put in his address. Then he's gonna read through the contract, make sure he's happy with the terms, etc. And then finally, once happy, he's going to sign the document. Here it's remembered his signature. He's agreed to remember that, but we can use a system font, we can draw it or use an image. Let's fill out the title. So he's gonna be our freelancer starting on Monday. And once again, we're gonna put that phone number in, mitigate risk, looking for eight and nine digits. And that's it, hit to return, and guess what? I finish, I'm going to agree or intend to sign digitally, and Matt Recipient's job is done. So let's now take a look at the PDF itself. Now when we open it, we see a blue bar, a long-term validation bar. And it does two things. The first one here is when I click on the identities of the signers, it's got a unique transaction number. The second thing it does is protect the document verbatim. So if I move to edit the PDF, you can see it's locked at the back end and it can't be tampered with. If someone hacks it, the blue bar will go red. But the real power here is beyond the signatures themselves. It really is in the audit trail. So in here, it shows every step of the journey, when it was created, when it was signed by Megan from HR, when it was delivered to Matt Siner, when he viewed it, when he signed it, IP addresses of the devices, etc., are all shown.